Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So this video is inspired by, um, or I took the idea from, I think the name is Oceana Got Reads. I'm probably butchering that, but you'll see it here. She did a video some time ago and it was like, I think she called it a pile of possibilities. So it's just like all of these books that you might read or are interested in reading. And I thought I would do that because lately I have just felt like buying books and just like looking at different books, but I'm trying to, you know, save money. So I'm not actually <laughs> buying books. I am like borrowing books from um, family members and of course looking at um, books on the Hoopla app which I'm able to use by having like a library card. So yeah, not really buying books but I'm going to show you guys um, all of the books that I'm just like kind of interested in reading. I don't know when or if I'll read it and some of these are rereads too. So let me hop right in. Um, this book my sister let me borrow. It's called The Yada Yada Prayer Group by Netta Jackson. I actually don't even know what it's about, but for some reason, the size of this book, the font is actually good too, but the size of this book and the way it feels, I just, I'm in the mood for print books, actually. Yeah, like I actually want to physically read the print books, but then... At the same time, like, I get tired because I also have to read a lot for school right now. And so by the time I'm done reading that, I don't really want to, you know, look at a print book. But, yeah. So let me read what it says. It says, what do an ex-con, a former drug addict, a real estate broker, a college student, and a married mother of two have in common? Nothing, or so I thought. Who would have imagined that God would make a group as mismatched as ours? The closest of friends. I almost didn't even go to the Chicago Women's Conference. After all, being thrown together with 500 strangers wasn't exactly my comfort zone, but I would be rooming with my boss, Avis, and I hoped that maybe I might make a friend or two. When Avis and I were assigned to a prayer group of 12 women at the conference, I wasn't sure what to think. There was Flo, an outspoken ex-drug addict, Ruth, a messianic Jew who could smother mother you to death, and Yo-Yo, an ex-con who wasn't even a Christian, not to mention women from Jamaica, Honduras, South Africa, practically a mini United Nations. We certainly didn't have much in common. But something happened that weekend to make us realize we had to hang together. So the Yada Yada prayer group decided to keep praying for each other via email. That worked for a while, but our personal struggles and requests soon got too intense for cyberspace. So we decided to meet together every other Sunday night. Talk about a rock tumbler, knocking off each other's rough edges, learning to laugh and cry along the way. But when I faced the biggest crisis of my life, God used my newfound girlfriends to help teach me. Jody Baxter, longtime Christian, good girl, what it means to be just a sinner saved by grace. Okay, okay. Oh, let me fix this. Okay, I think that's about there. This sounds really interesting, and I love that it's written in first person, because I feel like... Maybe not for nonfiction, but for fiction books, I read um, books that are more in, what is it, third person? I think it's third person. But yeah, this seems really cool. So this is a book that I'm interested in reading, and hopefully I'll get to it. Let's see. This is another one that I got from my sister. I actually looked through... Um, a bin of her books recently and I just let her know that I was borrowing it but it's called um, Funny in Farsi and it's a memoir of growing up Iranian in America so it looks like this I personally just like um, memoirs so I thought that this would be interesting in 1972 when she was seven the author and her family moved from Iran to Southern California arriving with no first-hand knowledge of this country beyond her father's glowing memories of his graduate school years here. In a series of deftly drawn scenes, Funny and Farsi chronicles the American journey of Dumas' wonderfully engaging family. Her engineer father, a sweetly quixotic dreamer who first sought riches on bowling for dollars and in Las Vegas. Her elegant mother, who never fully mastered English or cared to. Her uncle, who combated the effects of American fast food with an array of miraculous American weight loss gadgets, 
and um, Ferozo herself, who was a girl changed, who as a girl changed her name to Julie, and who encountered a second wave of culture shock when she met and married a Frenchman, becoming part of a one couple melting pot. An unforgettable story of identity, discovery, and the power of family love. So yeah, it's cool. I love memoirs, like I said. Um, here's another one. The Purple Pig and Other Miracles by Dick Eastman. So this basically kind of talks about um, how he started this like prayer movement and organization. Um, yeah, I've read it before, but I definitely want to reread it. I feel like it just really impacted me and it's just really cool to see um, Christians have, you know, just vision for something um, that will, you know, positively impact our world and draw people to Christ. So it says, um, they called it the Prayer Corps, a radical band of young intercessors in the 1970s who gave birth to many of today's 24-7 global prayer movements. In the 1960s and 1970s, a root of prayer was born from the prayers of Dick and Dee Eastman, who established the House of Prayer in Sacramento where young people could give a year of their lives to pray for others. Filled with the miraculous accounts of supernatural experiences with God, The Purple Pig and Other Miracles tells their story and the story of Every Home for Christ, an incredible ministry that has planted more than 2.8 billion gospel messages home by home in 205 nations around the world. Join the, the Eastmans on their amazing journey of answered prayer after Purple Pig showed up on their doorstep four decades ago. So, yeah. I want to read that and then you guys already know <laughs> last year I said how much I wanted to re read this book and I had started from the beginning of the series or I did reread the first book in the series but I never just got through the whole thing I just love this book I love this book I think it's so heartwarming I think the friendships in this book are beautiful I love the characters like this is my book <laughs> So I really want to reread it to see if I will like feel the same way because it's been a while. But I'll read the back of it for you guys. So it says, Julia, Megan, Donna, Grace, and Vinny. Oh, just hearing their names, you guys. Just hearing their names. I'm like, oh, I love them. Okay, Julia, Ma Megan, Donna, Grace, and Vinny are cross-country friends who are about to begin work on a challenge quilt. A piece of fabric is divided into equal shares and each woman takes one with the understanding that they will all meet at the Elm Creek Quilt Camp the following year to sew the disparate sections into a quilt. But the friends have set themselves a special challenge. No one can start working on her block until she has taken steps to solve her problems and achieve her personal goals. Although they share a common creative objective, the cross-country quilters find their close friendship tested by the demands of their individual lives. Yet, despite differences in age, race, and background, the women's love of quilting and affection for one another unite them. The quilt they create becomes a symbol of the threads that hold their lives together, a glorious patchwork of caring, loyalty, and acceptance that brings home an enduring truth. Friends may be separated by great distance, but the strength of their bond can transcend any obstacle. So, yeah. I also love the feel of this one, and the font size is pretty good let you guys see it so yeah there's that and then let's see I think I have one one more left yeah okay so the last one is this lullaby by Sarah Dessen this is another one that I borrowed from my sister I just like when I see this book I just have like a not really vivid memory actually a vague memory of my sister just like really enjoying this book so I was like let me let me test it out because I've never read anything by this author um I don't even know what this book is about but about the author she's one of the most well I don't know if she like is still but it says Sarah Dessen is one of the most popular authors writing for young adults okay cool so let's see this is what the back says the science of breaking up Remy always knows when to give a guy the speech right after the initial romantic rush, but before anything gets too serious. 
She's had her fair share of boyfriends, and she's learned all there is to learn from her mother, who's currently working on husband number five. So why is it that Remy can't seem to dump Dexter? It can't be his name. It can't be that he's messy and disorganized. And it certainly isn't that he's a musician, just like Remy's father, a man she never knew because he left before she was born. Could it be that Remy's romantic rules to live by don't apply anymore? Okay, so this seems like a romance, like romance slash drama. Um, I'm not, I wonder if it will actually tell me what the genre is. The genre here just says like interpersonal relationships, dating, mothers and daughters, and musicians. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not really that big on like romance books. I don't really read them I like them as subplots but like just purely romance I tend not to read but I would still like to give this a try because um I just like to see um what kinds of you know books other people like and so it's fun to just kind of see people's like personality through books that they choose so yeah hopefully I will um get to that but yeah that is my uh pile of possibilities so to speak Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.